Thank you also for uh, allowing me to join to this Cyano workshop. Uh, as uh, he mentioned, I am Maria Santos. I am working in Plant Research Laboratory in Michigan State University. And today I'm going to talk about metabolic engineering of cyanobacteria. This is the outline that I'm going to follow in this presentation. I'm going to start defining what is metabolic engineer, uh, why cyanobacteria could be an interesting host for biomolecular production, how to use some genome scale models for uh, engineering cyanobacteria metabolism, what tools uh, has been developed for cyanobacteria. After that, I'm going to focusing a couple of examples on metabolic engineering, omega-3 fatty acid, uh, limonene. And I would like to uh, finish this presentation to show in some future challenges in metabolic engineering, as well showing some useful resources for your possible research in this topic. What is metabolic engineering? Metabolic engineering can be defined as the modification of metabolic pathways, also uh, the regulatory processes, with the aim of improving the production of metabolites, it could be biochemicals, pharmaceuticals, biofuels, or other biotechnological products. In this metabolic engineer uh, process, we use normally a cycle that uh, is a compound of four steps. It starts with the step of design, in which we need to define which compound we want to produce. We need to select the host. In this case, we are going to use cyanobacteria, which enzyme and pathways are involved in the production of these compounds. Uh, we can use uh, synthetic design to introduce these pathways in the host. And after that, when we have decided all these steps, we need strain optimization. With all this uh, information, we uh, jump to the next step, uh, build a uh, step that we are. Uh, build the strain with all the modifications that we want to introduce. In this step, uh, there are new tools that we can use as crispr cups uh, systems. We can use adaptive laboratory evolution, even synthetic codons or chromosomes. Once we have built our possible strains, we need to test the production of the specific compound. It could be really helpful if we have high throughput screening uh, methods, and also, if we perform multi-omic analysis, we are going to get a lot of information that is going to be useful in the step of learn. In this step, we are going to accumulate all the information that we have uh, obtained in all the steps, and it's going to be useful for the next step of the design, build, test, and learn. What are the considerations uh, for uh, more efficient uh, design, build, test, learn cycles? We can ask. Uh, before starting these cycles, different questions that are going to allow us to decrease the number of uh, cycles that we need to do. First one is, how strongly should I express my gene? If there are multiple genes in the pathway, should they be expressed at different levels? Should my genes be on all the times or only in use under a certain set or set of conditions? How do I optimize the plus of carbon away from the endogenous pathway and through my pathway? How do I balance the intermediate metabolites within my pathway in order to maximize the total class? And finally, how will my introduced pathway interact with the cell physiology? Will it be toxic to the cell or negatively impact other stream processes of photosynthesis? Some of these questions we are going to uh, address in this presentation are we are going to have different uh, response in depending on the uh, compound that we want to produce. In this presentation, we are focusing cyanobacteria as host. We are going to describe what are the advantages and disadvantages of use these uh, microorganisms for bioproduction. Cyanobacteria offers some advantages compared with uh, um, uh, heterotroph heterotrophic organisms as E. coli or yeast, because the uh, media that they use is very simple and also the carbon source that this media contains, contains is very uh, cheap. Also, if we compare with plants, uh, cyanobacteria show higher efficiency of solar energy capture and conversion, as well as they don't compete with arable land or potable water supplies. Uh, moreover, uh, the processes for production in cyanobacteria are carbon neutral production process because instead of producing CO2, these organisms are able to consume this molecule. Cyanobacteria are easy for genetic manipulation, comparing, for example, with algae. 
And the leftover of um, the biomass production is a valuable product. And also cyanobacteria, there are organisms that they produce natural secondary metabolites. As you can see here, uh, cyanobacteria, depending on the species, obviously they produce some specific compounds, sugars, alcohols, terpenes, fatty acids, etc. However, there is also some disadvantages that these organisms they need to overcome. Uh, cyanobacteria has some slow division rates compared with E. coli and um, yeast. However, more and more uh, new cyanobacteria have been discovered in, in the last years that they saw uh, fast growing phenotypes. Also, comparing with E. coli and yeast, the limited number of genetic tools uh, available uh, is uh, a step that we need to um, improve. Most of the, in most of the cases, we use uh, genetic tools that have been developed for E. coli and the information that, that cannot not be directly applied as I will show you later. Also, uh, in order to use these uh, organisms for uh, large scale uh, production, we need to uh, develop a system that allows us to do that. Cyanobacteria are polyploid organisms, and when we uh, introduce a modification in the chromosome, we need to be sure that all the copies contain this chromosome. And because of that, uh, the segregation processes uh, are uh, longer than uh, normally. And also because we introduced this modification in the chromosome, uh, this uh, fat uh, produces genetic instability of the telos pathway. And comparing with other prokaryotic organisms, uh, the number of sequences or cyanobacteria uh, is relatively low. In this graph, I am showing uh, how many number of sequences uh, we have of other prokaryotic organisms and cyanobacteria, and as you can see here, the percentage is very low. In this table, I am describing what are the most common cyanobacterial strains using in metabolic engineering. Uh, we have cyanecocystis, that is a freshwater unicellular cyanobacteria with a small genome size, seven plasmid, and a lot of um, uh, DNA transfer methods has been developed for these cyanobacteria. In the second place, we have Cyanecococcus elongatus, PCC7942, that has also a small genome that contains normally one plasmid and in some cases another extra plasmid that is not essential. This is also a freshwater unicellular that can be transformed for conjugation, natural transformation, or extrapolation. Um, close related species that was discovered recently in 2015, Senecococcus anongatus utex uh, 2973, is quite similar to 7942. Uh, in fact, the genome is the same size, only contains one plasmid, and the difference between these um, two species is the little amount of single nucleotide, nucleotide polymorphisms that allow to this strain to uh, grow faster. And one of these uh, uh, SNMP uh, is um, affecting one of the uh, proteins involved in natural transformation. That's why it's only able to be transformed by conjugation. We have also a uh, uraline cyanobacteria 7002 that contains uh, seven pl six plasmids, sorry, and a uh, small genome site. The main problem with this cyanobacteria is uh, it requires vitamin B12 to grow, and it's not, uh, it's gonna be really expensive if we want to use uh, for uh, industrial production. And the last one that we have in, in this list is not stock 7120, it's a filamentous cyanobacteria. It could be interested in the processes that we need to recover the biomass because the product is accumulated inside of the cell. As I mentioned before, more and more uh, cyanobacteria have been recently discovered with fast growing phenotype. In fact, in 2018, uh, Cyanecococcus elongatus 11801 was isolated from, uh, from India. In this year, a uh, uh, close neighbor to uh, this uh, one that I have shown has been uh, presented. And also this year, another one, uh, 11901, has been uh, recently described as a cyanobacteria for high biomass production. Uh, even though cyanobacteria offer some characteristics that could be useful for uh, metabolic production, we need to uh, modify these uh, wild type strains to generate a chassis that allows us to produce the specific compound. In order to choose uh, which strain we want to use, we are gonna focus in the, in the sorry, in the strains that with genome sequencing uh, 
shows high quality annotation. And also we should choose a uh, cyanobacteria which a uh, genetic tool has been developed because for uh, metabolic engineering, we are gonna need uh, several parts. I'm gonna show uh, in the next slides, promoters, ribosome binding sites, terminators, ribosomes, etc. Also could be useful if we choose a cyanobacteria which uh, metabolic models has been developed because we can use in silico these metabolic models, models to predict which genes could we can uh, overexpress uh, time regulated or delete to increase the production of a specific compound. Also, if we have some previous physiological characterization, transcriptomics uh, and other omics uh, analysis, it is gonna be uh, really helpful to uh, figure out what are the conditions to uh, improve the production of a specific compound. Not in cyanobacteria, but in E. coli, uh, producing genome strains has been developed and it could be an interesting area that could be explored in the future in cyanobacteria to get a uh, cyanobacteria with reduced genome that allows us to uh, increase the genetic manipulation. And finally, if we have some cyanobacteria with uh, mutant collection, for example, knockout library has been developed, could be uh, useful if we want to uh, work with a specific uh, competitive pathways that can be removed. And also, if we have some high throughput screening platforms that can be used for this screening, it's going to be uh, speed up the processes to generate our final chassis. With all of this, we are going to focus on uh, how we can apply first uh, genome scale models for uh, engineered uh, cyanobacteria. Uh, to start this part of the presentation, I would like to define what is a genome scale model. It's a large scale stoichiometric model that describes metabolic pathways as stoichiometric coefficients and mass balances of participating metabolites and are simulated using numerical optimization. In other words, this is, for example, the metabolism or our cyanobacteria. We are going to have a matrix, as you can see here, and in the rows, we are going to have the reaction and in the uh, columns, the metabolites, and this stoichiometric uh, number represents the reactions uh, uh, that involve this metabolism. We can use uh, different constraints uh, and algorithms that are gonna uh, allow us to identify which gene we can overexpress, then regulate or knock out. Uh, after that, when we identify these uh, modifications in silico, they can be used in vivo to uh, be uh, manipulated the genome of the specific strain and increase the production of the target chemical. Uh, one example we have here, we have uh, in our metabolic model, we need to apply some constraints. The, in a steady state, the flash of every, all, all reactions in the cyanobacterial uh, species is going to be equal to zero. We need to establish some lower and upper bound to uh, some uh, specific constraints. Normally, it could be the line intensity that we use in the production, the CO2 uh, percentage that, that we use. Uh, with these constraints, uh, we are going to get an um, allowable uh, solution in space. Um, and the objective or, uh, or to um, constrain a little bit more this space of solutions, we can maximize the objective function that in this case is going to be the production of a specific compound. And the, the algorithm is going to give us the optimal solution to improve this production. A lot of algorithms have been developed to uh, perform this, uh, uh, to generate or obtain this optimal solution. And some of them uh, are specifically involved uh, in getting uh, which genes we can delete, other ones which genes we can overexpress. And in some cases, some uh, algorithms uh, can identify which pathways or, in, or reactions we can include in our species to increase the production of specific compounds. At the end of this presentation, I'm going to focus on one example that did use the, this algorithm of force. In this slide, I'm going to show how uh, cyanobacterial genome scale models have been developed. First, cyanobacterial models were very basic. They included only information about central carbon metabolism and some rudimentary uh, light reactions. And all, but uh, the recent model has been improved more and more because they bias the information of genome annotation and literature. They can study information for databases as cyanobase, transport database, and metasig. And 
the genome scan models can be obtained uh, quickly if we use uh, some tools that has been developed for rapid generation of draft. However, this draft, they need to be still curated manually to uh, correct some mistakes that these tools can be uh, produced. And as you will know, cyanobacteria contains a high percentage or unknown uh, genes. And with these uh, tools from Gene Protein Association and Gut Feeling, the information that can be added uh, to the model can increase their accuracy. And also, models can be validated using essentially the uh, gene information, comparing uh, experimental phenotype with the non scale model prediction. We can uh, estimate how accurate, accurate is our model. And um, in the future perspective, this model can still be improved, obviously. Uh, it can be uh, improved using integrate, integration of omic data sets and also uh, improving the uh, modeling of light reactions, alternative electron pathways and photorespiration. And could be really, really interested if we uh, use the information that has been developed for kinetic models and introduced in these genome scale models. In this list, uh, you can see all the cyanobacterial genome scale models that have been, have been developed uh, during many, many years. Uh, Cynecophistis has a lot of uh, genetic uh, genome scale models, and uh, you can see here they include more reactions and genes and metabolites. The second case with more metabolic models is 702. These uh, genome scale models I, I mentioned previously offer some advantages. They can be used in silico to determine which modifications we can uh, perform in our model stains to produce a specific compound. Uh, in fact, um, the model of cynecocystis and cynecococcus using different algorithms has been applied to increase the production of different uh, chemical compounds. At the end of this presentation, I'm going to explain this ex example where limonene uh, production was increased using this uh, algorithm. Uh, for doing metabolic engineering cyanobacteria, we need some specific tools. Uh, in the first place, we need to use some plasmids to uh, introduce the modifications in the, in the cells. We have different uh, type of plasmids in cyanobacteria that we can use. In all the cases, we are going to have an original replication of E. coli that allows, because the modifications or the construction of this plasmid uh, we perform uh, in E. coli. Uh, we have a, a first kind, conjugative and cell replicate cell replicative plasmids, that they need an origin of transference because normally these plasmids are transferred from E. coli to cyanobacteria, and they need an origin of replication of cyanobacteria, normally are based on some endogenous plasmids that this cyanobacteria contains, or we can use a broad host range uh, origin of replication plasmid, our RSF1010. The second type of plasmids that we have are conjugative and integrative. In this case, we are going to have an original transference for transfer for E. coli to uh, cyanobacteria. And also uh, some neutral site regions, upstream and downstream, uh, that are, they are going to allow us to integrate our construction in the genome. And in the last case, we have integrative plasmids that are going to be directly integrated in the uh, chromosome. And these plasmids normally are uh, transformed uh, in cyanobacteria by natural transformation. Uh, normally, there are going to be some cyanobacteria that are not natural transformation. And in this case, we are going to need to use conjugative integrative plasmids. Between these two regions, we can introduce different parts. We are going to have always an antibiotic resistant to select our transformant. We can use different promoters, ribosome being desired, ribosome switch, and different terminators. All these parts I'm going to explain in the next slides. Um, as in other my, uh, uh, organisms, we can use uh, modular vectors for uh, engineering inside the bacteria. In fact, uh, many, many years, biobrick plasmids that were developed firstly for E. coli and um, bacillus subtilis have been uh, used inside the bacteria. But recently, uh, a specific battery of this uh, biobrick called Cynebrix has been developed specifically for 7942 using different neutral sites, antibiotic resistant promoters, and uh, some, uh, the gene on interest. And 
as in the case of BioBridge, this Cinebrix follows the rules of nomenclature for this uh, specific platinum. In the second place, uh, another system that has been developed for E.coli are modular cloning system that is based on the Golden Gate uh, cloning uh, system. And it's based on the use of different levels uh, at zero. Uh, we have uh, promoter, uh, terminators that we are gonna join in the level one. And after that, we can join into the plasmid. A similar system has been developed recently for uh, cyanobacteria called cyanogate. And in the last example, we have a cyanovector. This cyanovector has the different parts cloning in different uh, plasmids or vectors with, uh, that are gonna uh, contain overlapping GC adapters upstream and downstream of uh, our part. Uh, once we have selected our, uh, the different parts that we want to clone, we are gonna restrict these uh, parts we are gonna purify, put together in a tube and perform an assembly reaction. In fact, for all this step or to uh, optimize all this step, uh, this uh, cyanobacter vector system has developed an assembly portal that we can choose the different parts that we want to include in our uh, final vector as cyanobacterial replicants, antibiotic markers, uh, promoters, E. coli original replication, etc. Another part uh, that we can use uh, in our uh, constructions are promoters. Promoter is a region located near the transcription star sites and regulate transcription initiation of the gene by controlling the binding of RNA polymerase. In this table, uh, uh, you can see the most common promoters that has been used in cyanobacteria. We include some constitutive pro promoters that are which expression is constant along the time. In this list, we have uh, the PCP 560 that is a super strong promoter from Cynecocystis and PSBA2 from Cynecocystis that is a promoter from one of the two units of the PS2. We have also some inducible promoters which uh, respond uh, to external input, normally to uh, the concentration of our inducer. And in this list, we have this one. We have some uh, specific one that has been developed for E. coli, but they uh, work in uh, cyanobacteria, PTRC, PLAC. Uh, recently developed for cyanocophistis, L03, that is inducible by an hydrotetracycline. And also uh, one uh, endogenous promoter from cyanocophistis, PNRSB, that is inducible by nickel. This is a small list of the promoters that have been used in cyanobacteria, but more and more has been discovering more uh, promoters. In this, list, in this list, we have some new uh, inducible promoters that has been described for cyanobacteria. I'm gonna explain the uh, last three ones. We have in the first place, uh, promoter inducible but vanillate. In absence of uh, vanillate, the RNA polymerase is not gonna be able to join to the operator of this promoter because the repressor is gonna be dimerized and joined to this operator. In presence of vanillate, uh, the, this molecule is gonna join to the repressor, uh, liberating the space for uh, in the operator in the promoter, allowing to the RNA polymerase to join and transcribe the gene of interest. In the second place, we have a PIVAC promoter that has been studied many, many years in E. coli. Uh, in absence of uh, arabinose, that is in the inducer of this promoter, uh, the repressor RSC is gonna join to the, um, one of the um, regions of the promoter and to the operator, forming a secondary structure uh, in the promoter and not allowing to the RNA polymerase to join. When arabinose is present, they, uh, uh, is gonna join to the repressor RSC that is gonna change or release this secondary structure because some part joins to the other region of the promoter I2 and allowing to the RNA polymerase to join to the promoter and transcribe the gene of interest. And in the last place, we have a RAN-NOS inducible promoter. In absence of ran the uh, activator RAS is not gonna be able to join to the regions of the promoter uh, and dimerize. But when we add Ranos, this uh, activator dimerize joins to the promoter and allows uh, the RNA polymerase to join and also transcribe the gene of interest. 
uh, next toolbox that we can use inside a bacteria to modulate the expression of uh, the gene of interest could be ribosome binding sites. Ribosome binding sites are sequenced upstream of, of the star column that is responsible for the recruitment of the ribosome during the initiation of protein translation. This uh, ribosome binding site normally contains the signed Algarno sequence. Inside the material, different types of ribosome binding sites have been used. We can use native um, ribosome binding sites, synthetic or heterologous one. Um, the effectiveness of a uh, ribosome is going to depend on uh, the base pairing potential with the anti syn Talgarno sequence and the spacing between the ribosome binding sites and the star column. In this uh, experiment, they have used three ribosome binding sites uh, from the uh, uh, BioBrick uh, system, and also they have developed a ribosome binding site synthetic one for synecopistis. And they compare uh, the level of expression of the fluorescent protein with this ribosome binding site in synecopistis and as in, in, in E. coli. As you can see here, the one that works better from in, in synecopistis was the synthetic one. And the important message from this slide, from, from this graph, is that we can say that it's really, really important to characterize these biological parts in the respective cellular contents because the things that can uh, work from E. coli, they cannot work for uh, cyanobacteria and vice versa. In the second, uh, second toolbox that we are going to describe in this presentation are ribo switches that are source sequences or uh, messing RNA that can change their structure, structural conformation to regulate gene expression. The most famous uh, ribo switch is used in cyanobacteria is a theophylline dependent ribo switch. In absence of uh, this theophylline, uh, the ribosome binding site is going to form an atomer with uh, the part of the sequence of the messenger RNA, uh, not allowing to the ribosome uh, to join to this uh, RNA and not translating the gene of interest. But when we have theophyll in our system, the uh, atomer is the theophyllene is going to join to this atomer. The ribosome binding site is going to be liberated, allowing to the ribosome to join and translate the gene of interest. This uh, theophylline uh, dependent riboswitch has been tested with different promoters. In the first place, they have been tested with uh, PTRC, a very strong promoter, but it's very leaky and absent of uh, inducer. Uh, you, using this um, ribos, uh, switch, this promoter can be uh, less leaky uh, in absent of the uh, inducer, in both inducer, and also can uh, increase the, ind the ind induction ratio uh, after adding both inducer. Also, this ribosome riboswitch has been used with uh, some constitutive promoters as PICON2. This is an example for Sinecococcus, and they tested different riboswitches, mo modifications of these uh, theophyll independent riboswitches, some changes in nucleotides. And as you can see here, the induction ratio, these uh, different uh, versions, is pretty good. But the important part is having a system that is uh, off uh, when we don't have the uh, theophylline present. So you can see here in these two cases, uh, in absence of uh, theophylline, we have a still expression. Uh, the next toolbox that we can use in our system are terminators uh, that are DNA sequence that si signal the RNA polymerase to terminate transcription and improves the stability of gene transcript during translation. In this example, they have used a battery of different uh, terminators for E. coli, synthetics, or different fates. They have uh, using they have been using a system where they uh, they use uh, the Ranose promoter and a yellow, a yellow fluorescent protein, and they have uh, introduced the different uh, terminators between the promoter and the fluorescent protein. In the case of, uh, they are going to have a control with our uh, terminator that is going to produce the higher levels of fluorescence, as you can see here. And the idea is to test which uh, terminators are able to reduce the amount of fluorescence that we are going to get uh, after inducing the promoter. And as you can see here, most of them, the uh, E. coli terminators and synthetic uh, terminators work very well, not uh, the uh, phase one. Um, one of the main problems when we want to introduce modification in, uh, in the genome of cyanobacteria is the amount of uh, antibiotic resistance that we can use. 
because more modification, more antibiotic resistance that we need to introduce uh, in the chromosome. That also they could be a burden for the cells apart from that. And also we have a limited number of antibiotics that we can use in cyanobacteria compared with other organisms as E. coli. For uh, improving this um, or to increase uh, the number of modifications that we can perform, some markerless system has been, have been developed for cyanobacteria. In this first one, it's a very old one, but I have been using in my thesis and it works very, very well. The main problem is we need to build two plasmids for its modification. Um, we are gonna start with a wild type strain and we are gonna modify the wild type RPS12 gene. We wanna introduce a mutation in the nucleotide 128, uh, change from adenine to a guanidine. And during this modification, our strain is gonna be, uh, our gene is gonna be mutated and our strain is gonna be streptomycin resistant. After that, we are gonna perform a transformation using a plasmid, a plasmid that is gonna target our gene uh, by uh, introducing a, a RPS12 copy of uh, from cynecocystis and there are PSPA1 promoter and alkanamycin resistant. This construction is going to recombine with the chromosome and this part is going to be integrating in the chromosome and we are going to be able to select our cells because they are going to be streptomycin sensitive because uh, the RPS12 uh, wild type copy or uh, cynecocystis is going to be dom dominant uh, against the mutated copy and also we are going to be able to select because our cells are going to be canamycin resistant since we have introduced this cassette. In the second step, we are going to use a second plasmid that contains either a target gene mutated or a short version of a gene if we want to delete it. And it's going to recombine with the uh, previous uh, gene modifier. And in this case, our cells are going to be streptomycin resistant because the wild type copy of RPS12 is going to be removed and canamycin sensitive because we don't have the canamycin resistant anymore. A new uh, system that has been developed recently for cyanobacteria is CRISPR-Cas technology. This CRISPR-Cas uh, system, we need, uh, we need uh, only one plasmid that contains a canamycin resistant gene. And also we have our Cas protein and the uh, inducible promoter, PILAT, and the CRISPR RNA coding sequence and their uh, uh, constitutive promoter. And we need to include also in this uh, plasmid upstream and other downstream sequence of the area that we want to modify. When we have built this plasmid, we introduce in cyanobacteria and we activate the expression of gas by uh, using IPTG. Um, uh, the system is going to express uh, the gas protein and the CRISPR RNA and it's going to uh, target the uh, genome sequence that we want to modify and the Cas protein is going to uh, cleavage the DNA and only the cells that are going to produce homologous recombination with the regions that we introduce in the plasmid are going to be able to survive. And in this system, we are going to select our cells because they are going to be canamycin resistant for the cassette that we introduced. And to get rid of the plasmid, we are going to need to segregate the constructions by uh, glowing the cells in BG11 without canamycin. In this last part of the presentation, I'm going to show some examples how to uh, metabolic engineering has been developed in cyanobacteria. In this diagram, uh, uh, in this article, they have summarized which uh, uh, compounds has been produced by metabolic engineering in cyanobacteria. As you can see, there's a long list, isobutanol, ethanol, mannitol, sucrose. In this uh, presentation, I'm going to explain two examples. In the first one, fatty acid biosynthesis, and in the second one, demon in production. Uh, fatty acid biosynthesis in cyanobacteria is characterized for three steps. In the first step, the initiation step, acetyl coenzyme A is transformed to acetoacetyl ACP for three enzymes, acetyl CoA carboxylase, uh, fat D, and fat H. This molecule is after that uh, used in the uh, elongation, elongation cycle that is performed several times until the fatty, fatty acid contains 16 or 18 carbon. These uh, fatty acids are used in the saturation step. Um, 
depending on the uh, cyanobacterial species, we are going to have different amount of the, of the saturases. All of them contain at least uh, this heat that is going to introduce the first double bond. But uh, in, for example, 7942 doesn't contain any more. 702 contains uh, two extra ones, this A and this B, that introduce the, uh, the next two uh, double bond. And cyanocothistis contains also an extra one that is called this D, that introduces the fourth double bond. In this uh, work, uh, the authors uh, modify 7942 to produce uh, alpha linolenic. And as I mentioned, uh, uh, 7942 only contains the C. And in order to do that, they use the C and the B from 702. And the first uh, information that we can start from this publication is uh, the production of the desired compound is going to depend on the promoter strength. These authors, they use different, uh, two different promoters to express these desaturases. PNRSB, as I mentioned before, is indecible by nickel, and PTRC that is indecible by IPTG. As you can see here, with PNRSB, the level of alpha linolenic produced was very low, and these levels were higher when PTRC promoter was uh, used. Uh, these levels were quite similar to the uh, original, uh, original species where uh, these desaturases were extracted. Uh, 7002. In fact, uh, the, in this article, they analyze uh, the uh, activity of these two promoters using uh, Lux AB construction. They measure uh, the luminescence uh, along the time after uh, induction with the different inducer. And as you can see here, the maximum level of expression for uh, uh, PNRSB, it takes place at 24 hours, is around three. Uh, thousand uh, relative luminescence units. And also they measure PTRC with different concentration of IPTG, observing that there is no difference between 100 micromolar and 1 millimolar of IPTG, and getting the highest uh, levels of expression in 24 hours, and there are around 25,000 relative luminescence units. Indicated that with this uh, experiment that uh, PTRC is stronger with, than uh, PNRSB, and that's why we get more uh, uh, alpha linolenic with PTRC. In order to increase the omega, uh, the specific production of alpha linolenic, we could uh, think that we should have more intermediate to uh, increase the production of the final product. Um, in order to do that, in this article, they uh, overexpress different uh, enzymes involved in the elongation step. And uh, they observe that only with fat F, they decrease the, all the C14 and C15, uh, C16 uh, fatty acid species. And they increase C18 species that are interesting for the production of alpha linolenic. They got a similar result when uh, they uh, deleted fat D that is a gene involved in the degradation of fatty acid. As you can see here, with this modification, they decrease C161 and increase the C18 uh, species. Combining these uh, two modifications in the strain that contains the desaturases, they uh, got a high increase in the alpha linolenic. In this case, was 22.5% uh, of alpha linolenic in the cells compare it with only PTRC this AB that was around 8%. In the next sample, I'm going to talk about limonene production. Uh, I'm going to start explaining why limonene is a very interesting molecule. It's a molecule that can be used as a fragrance, a flavor in different uh, drinks, can be used as antimicrobial, insect uh, attract repellent, and also in medicine as a solvent and biomaterial, and recently has been discovered that could be applied to uh, biofuel production. Uh, in cyanobacteria, we can produce uh, limonene, only introduce the limonene synthase, and using the precursors obtained in the methyl erythritol uh, phosphate pathway. That this uh, is, uh, pathway starts with the using of pyruvate and glycerol triphosphate. Uh, Using different limonene synthase, we can produce as limonene or a limonene that they have different uh, utilities uh, uh, in, as a bioproduct. Uh, I forgot to mention that limonene synthase uh, normally are presented in plants, not in other organisms, uh, and that's why we need to use uh, this uh, enzyme from plants. 
as in the previous case, uh, the lemon in production was dependent on the promo promoter strength. In this case, you, they used three different promoters, a PTRC promoter, a PHBS, that is an endogenous promoter from a gene in cyanobacteria, and they use a PSB a promoter from P uh, with a, a ribosome bit inside. And using this last con construction, they observe the highest levels on the limonin, indicating that in the previous case, the best promoter was PTRC, but in, the, the, in this case, we needed a different promoter, probably because the gene that we want to explain, uh, express uh, cans from plants, not from cyanobacteria. As a consequence of this limonin production, they uh, observed some changes in the proteomics, in the proteomics uh, analysis. They got an increase in PS2 and PS1 uh, proteins, ATP synthesis, electron transport, CO2 assimilation. They observed an increase, an increase in carbon benzone cycle. In fact, uh, they observed a specific uh, increase in two proteins, one of them involved in the production of glycerol 3-phosphate and the other one in the pyruvate phosphate. Uh, both of them are uh, precursors from the uh, pathway to produce limonin. They observed some increase in the ribosoma, ribosomal proteins, indicated that pr for producing uh, limonin, we need an increase of uh, translation uh, levels in the cyanobacteria. And also, sometimes when we introduce a non-native pathway, pathway in a microorganisms, we have some beneficial effects as limonin production, but we, have, we can have some negative effects in other metabo metabolic pathways. In this case, the production of uh, limonene has a negative impact, uh, as you can see here in the proteomics analysis and here in the phycobilly proteins content, no changes in chlorophyll, in carotenoid, but it was observed a decrease in the phycobilly content. And also another negative impact of limonene production was a decrease in the levels of, uh, or in the oxygen evolution, in the photosynthetic activity. This was mainly uh, because uh, the synthesis or um, limonin doesn't require higher contents or uh, NADPH ATP ratio, and that's why the cells they don't need to fix to uh, they don't need to use too much light to use these electrons to produce ATP and NADPH. And also, when we want to produce a specific compound, normally we can choose a specific enzyme from an organism, but using uh, or testing different. Uh, the same protein from different organisms, we can get different catalytic uh, activity and it can influence the gel of the desired compound. In this uh, experiment, they uh, measure the limonin production using two limonin synthase, in the first case from menta spicata and in the second place from citrus lemon. And with the uh, menta spicata, the levels of limonin were higher at uh, different times post induction. And sometimes uh, we can modify without um, only identifying some competitive pathways to improve the production of specific compound, but also we can use uh, the genome scale models that I explained uh, previously in this presentation using algorithm, algorithms like uh, OTFORS. In this case, it used, they use a model from Negotistis and they uh, optimize in the model the production of limonin. And in the first place, uh, they identified that the overexpression of uh, ribulose 5-phosphate epimerase and isomerase was enough to increase around 89% of the production of limonene in silico. Combining this overexpression with the com uh, overexpression of the genane uh, diphosphate synthase, the uh, production increases 92%. Uh, once they identified this modification in silico, the authors decided to test uh, these uh, modifications in vivo. And as you can see here, they always compare with the original strains, only exp uh, expressing limonene synthase. When they are uh, RPAI and RPAE, the limonene uh, uh, production increases. They say when they are only GPPS, and when they combine all the modification in the same, the same strain, the levels increasing very highly. And also, as I mentioned before, when we express a non-native pathways, we can divert resources from competitive pathways to design, uh, to generate the, the, the specific compound. And in this case, 
uh, they didn't observe any changes in carotenoids, but when they uh, combine these modifications in the strain, they observe a decrease in the chlorophyll content. In fact, the uh, pathway to produce chlorophyll is competing for uh, the synthesis of limonene. And I would like to finish this presentation showing, showing some future challenges in metabolic engineering of cyanobacteria. Um, we can uh, develop better synthetic biology tools uh, in order to uh, perform uh, metabolic engineering. We can increase the speed and efficiency of genome engineering, maybe in the future reducing polyploid, polyploidy. In order to do that, we need to figure it out why cyanobacteria has multiple copies of the chromosome inside the cells. And as I mentioned before, uh, the, uh, we have, uh, in cyanobacteria, they have been developed CRISPR-Cas system, but the efficiency of these uh, um, systems is very low, and sometimes this uh, CRISPR-Cas is able to target sequence that we don't expect. And improving this uh, technology that only requires uh, one plasmid instead of the uh, all marketless system that requires two, we are going to uh, speed up the, uh, the ability of getting uh, modifications in cyanobacteria. And also, instead of using uh, integrated chromosomes, that is uh, in, for metabolic engineering, is most of the cases, if we, we are able to perform new uh, replicated plasmids to express for instance, DNA as they have been used in E. coli and GIS. We can uh, develop uh, very uh, or libraries that can be uh, analyzed by high, high throughput screening, increasing the ability and the speed of what uh, we can optimize the production of a specific compound. And also, uh, we need to uh, develop better regu regulatory control uh, to, increase, to increase strain stability. Because as I mentioned before, most of the tools that we have used from in bacteria, they have been developed for uh, E. coli and other uh, prokaryotic organisms. And if we have more specific uh, tools for cyanobacteria, probably we are going to be able uh, to control better the expression of our genes. And also, this is one uh, idea that has been recently developed for E. coli, is the automation of uh, iterative uh, design, build, test, learn cycles has been used in E. coli to produce flavonoids or uh, dodecanol. And in this case, instead of uh, doing this, all these steps uh, in the laboratory, most of the steps are performed by computers. In the uh, process of design, we are going to use the uh, uh, in silico models to identify the pathway that we want to uh, express, for example. Computers are going to design uh, the parts, experiments, instructions. We are going to, instead of doing PCR in the laboratory, we are going to synthesize the DNAs. We are going to put all the parts together using robots and purify the DNA sequence. After that, we are going to test our battery of, uh, libraries using uh, high throughput screening. And with all this data, uh, we can uh, use them machine learning and all um, computer tools to analyze the data and start a new cycle or design, build, test, and learn. And I, uh, the last slide of this presentation, I'm going to show some useful resources, some new uh, or recently um, reviews related with metabolic engineering cyanobacteria, and also some tools that, or databases that can be useful uh, to uh, build and to identify the pathways that you want to use. And um, thank you.